Today we are going to be disassembling, repairing, and discussing the theory of operation of a Keurig Elite Model K90 coffee maker. I like this Keurig. It's one of the first that I know of that has the capability for you to pre-select things like the brew strength and the quantity before the hot water is ready inside the machine. On the older Keurigs, you had to wait for the hot water to get ready before it would allow you to make any selections on the menu and so forth. This one, you can make those selections, press all the buttons you want, walk away, it'll remember what you pressed, and when the hot water is good and ready, it will start dispensing it and brewing the coffee for you. This Keurig, however, was defective oh, a little over a year after we bought it. Keurig is shipping us a new one. Meanwhile, the old one, I'm going to disassemble it and repair it. On this Keurig, it just so happens that it needs an air pump. We're going to now start to remove the top cover here. The top cover is all one piece all the way around here. It has to be removed in order to get access to any any other areas down below for servicing, unfortunately. The shroud here, you can't get this shroud off totally until you until you remove the top piece. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll start by removing this screw here. Um, this, this here, this is a port. It's a port that uh, empties water back out into the external water tank. The external water tank goes here uh, and down below. But this is a port that empties out excess water uh, once in a while. And so we're going to remove this screw here because this goes directly into this cover that my fingers are on. We start by removing a latch or opening up a latch rather. You can see it down in there pointing at that. There's a latch there. I'm going to go ahead and use a hook tool here like this. Well, it's actually an ice pick. Um, just an old ice pick. It's been bent at the tip and sharpened slightly. Uh, may lose some people if I say you got to make a custom tool, but it really does help. And things like this, a hook tool like that, probably make a lot of other uses for it, things you never knew you needed it for. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get started here with this latch. Go ahead and get underneath of the latch. There we go. Popped it open. Now you'll see that I can move this cover a little bit. Now that we popped open this latch back behind here that you can't see now, we're on the side. As you can see, this piece will flex now. It's somewhat loose. There's no latches in this area here, but there's latches along the back. We'll start to pop those. So in order to do that, I'm going to start sliding the screwdriver in here like that. Start sliding into, move it back. And now that I did that, there's a latch that's popped back here. There's a latch there. It's been popped open. 
and just keep moving back further. Same idea. We've already popped a latch there. Some of these are a little easier on this unit because I've been into it before. You may have to work a little more at it, but the same idea. I'm going to move back here now. Pop that one there. Uh, yeah, you can see it there now. And I just heard another one pop back here. Make sure that's all of them on the side here. And I'll just leave that in there to steady it so it doesn't relatch itself. And now we've got this whole piece here starting to come up. There are two more latches along the front here, this side and that side, a couple of latches. We're not going to be able to do those just yet. We'll have to go back and do some more latches back in this area here toward the back and right where this bar is here. We're going to go back and do those latches next. We have another latch here on the interior corner on the right hand side that we'll need to pop open as you see there. In order to do that I'm going to use the hook tool again and I've raised up the K-cup arm here slightly to give me the angle that I need to get in there with the hook tool. And I'll work the hook tool underneath the latch. And I'm underneath the latch. Now in order to totally pop this open I need to simultaneously lift the cover up over on my left hand side to get enough leverage to pop it open and I'll do that. And as you can see, it did pop open. And as I was trying to pop it open, I'm, I simultaneously was pulling upward like that on the cover. Get that to pop open. And as you saw there, the screwdriver fell out. I had the screwdriver in this position over here to hold the cover open so that the latches don't relatch themselves. They have a bad habit of closing themselves back up. We have another latch to pop just between here. We just got done popping this one open back there. That one's loose. Can't see it as well from here, but it's loose. Now we're going to pop one down there. You won't be able to see that as well. But I've already got the hook tool in here. The hook tool is coming from over here. Can't see it. But I've got it in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop open this latch. And now the lid is open that far. Once again, I ran the hook tool through from about like this angle here, getting into it this way to get that latch open. Now you can see It's open back here, all the latches came open, and 
And now there's two more latches left in the front there and there. The way those behave, if you rock this lid forward, they just unlatch. It sounded like something broke, but it did not. It just unlatched. And there you have the two latches there. They were hooked up against this one here and another smaller one down deep in there. And as you, again, as you rock, you rock these back, this tends to pull itself away from, from the catch here as you rock it. So it just kind of came open. That's why we had to wait until the very last step to do that. So now everything's open on this unit, ready for us to take the cover off. Now that we have the top cover removed, we have a chance to see some of the latches here without anything blocking our view of them. One there, 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 and one there. Also on the front here, we have a little nub there that it will catch on. Also an even smaller one inside there. On the interior side now we have a latch there. One there. And one over here on this side that you can't see very well. But you can see the little nub a little bit. Here is a close up of one of the tab latches. The tabs in the cover fit into that latch, the one underneath those ridges. And you will notice that the tabs in the cover need to be pushed outward, outward, in order to get these latches open. Here you will be able to see all the different latches that are present on the top that need to be popped. This would be near the front of the unit. And one of that type along the side. There's another of that type along the back as well. Some other ones. Once again, another view of the latches with the cover laid lightly on top. That there is not a latch, it's just a tab that holds down this water line here. Latch there. Another latch on the back corner. A tab there with a latch beside it. Another latch and two latches in the front. The latch there on the interior. And the latch on the interior to the right side. To remove the sh side shroud off of the unit, Need to remove some screws here. Looking at it from the bottom, need to remove that screw there. This one here is optional. It holds on this uh, this front 
panel here, decorative panel. You could leave that screw in if you want because the front decorative panel really doesn't need to be removed. Other than this one here, we'll move around the unit. There's another screw there. I've removed all the screws from the bottom. That's why you don't see any. I'm just pointing to them right now. Another screw. And the last screw is in there. There are five screws total, including the screw that goes to the panel, the decorative panel in front. So you can remove either the four screws or the five screws, whichever you choose. Once those screws are all removed, there are some latches inside here that need to be popped open. The screws apparently were not enough. They've got a couple of latches, just two. So you have to pry on those to get those taken care of. Once you do, you can see that opened up there on this side. We'll try to move around and do the other side the same way. Pop the latch there. And that, as you can see, it raised up. We got a hold of that latch and popped it open. There's a latch there. You notice I'm doing this without turning the unit upside down. You might get away with turning your Keurig upside down, but there are parts of the Keurig that need to have air in them, tubing that is meant for only air and no water. If you turn it upside down, you may get water into the tubing where the air is supposed to be, mess up uh, the pressure sensor and possibly the air pump. Or you might get away with it just fine. Uh, I would just rather keep it upright. It saves the Keurig. Once you've removed all the screws and popped the two latches on the bottom, you can take the shroud off by moving it upwards Notice, however, you can't quite do that yet because you have to raise the K-cup arm first to allow you to do it. Now you can raise it up and remove it fairly easily, as you see there. I might point out that unlike the older Keurigs, the base on this one is built in to the rest of the unit. It's part of the entire chassis. On the older Keurigs, it was a metal plate, the bottom was. And uh, you had to remove the bottom plate first and drill out a rivet or whatever you do to get the grounds, ground wires undone. But on these newer Keurigs, the bottom is part of the uh, total chassis. Here is a closer view of some of these latches or hooks back here. They've got hooks. You can see there that this cover hooks onto there, 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 and so on down. And on, on the cover side of it, that's the holes that the hooks go into. Try to get better light there. Yeah, the, the hooks go into those holes, just hook into them like that not too hard to pull that open it's just letting you know the cover wants to be pulled upwards slightly once it's completely free like this but you won't have any trouble doing that if you want to remove the 
top control display unit, you can do that. That's the part with the display and buttons on the top. However, you don't need to remove that to get access to the other areas of the Keurig down below. You can remove the control display unit, however, if you think there's a problem with it and it needs to be repaired or replaced, you can remove the control display unit. However, in order to remove it, you also have to remove the top cover of the Keurig, the part that's a uh, silver top cover, you can remove that. You have to remove that in order to service the control display unit and remove it. In order to remove the control display unit, you have to start with removing these two screws here, that one and that one. And we'll go ahead and do that now. Being careful, of course, not to drop the screws into the unit. Fell on the floor, that's much preferable to getting lost in the unit. And once again on the floor. Now you notice this is starting to get loose here. So it's, it's ready to be removed. Once you've removed the top lid from the Keurig and also loosened up the front display, you'll see a ribbon cable, as you see here, the ribbon cable winds up back in the back against the circuit board here, main circuit board. You unplug the ribbon cable from this main circuit board by using your finger or other such object to loosen that latch. It hinges open. The ribbon cable is now loose. And you then need to remove the ribbon cable by pulling it through the rubber seal here and pulling it through carefully. And now it's out. Now that it's out, I can remove this top display like so. And now it's free. You will have to remove the cable from this end. Do not try to remove the cable from the other end. Even though it shows a plug in there, that's, that's a seal, a moisture seal plug. It's not an electrical plug, it's just a moisture seal plug. You can pop that open, but you won't be able to remove the ribbon cable without hurting it. Once you have the top cover display unit removed, this is it. The part you normally see, the part that you don't. If you want to get to the electronics inside, you remove four screws there, 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 and there. After you do that, you can unlatch a latch there in there and uh, then the cover top cover comes off the electronics will be sandwiched in between the two layers this layer you see here and 
and this layer that's on top, those are two separate pieces of plastic. The circuitry is sandwiched between them with a membrane switch uh, assembly. And this protects the display from getting moisture into it. I have no problems with this unit right now, so I'm not going to disassemble this. Instead, I'm going to repair the part that I need to repair. If you need to remove the front right panel, you first remove the screw on the bottom. There. And it's been removed. Then you remove the top panel. After that, there's a little catch here. need to pull forward towards me here to clear that tab. I'm going to try to do that without dropping the panel once this is pulled forwards. It's clear to come off. view of the panel there. On the side of the machine, the water tank sits here. That's the inlet from the water, the external water tank. And uh, water gets pumped through this device here, goes in through a tube, and you can't see it in this shot, but it goes to the water pump back behind. Actually, you can see that somewhat. It goes to the water pump. This device here is now your, sense, your water level sensing unit. It senses the water level in the external tank. It is no longer a magnet that uh, sits inside the water, t the external water tank. It's no longer a magnetic sensor anymore. It's a couple of electrodes that go inside this device and the electrodes sense the water level in the external tank. Uh, you, as you fill it up, the way, the way it fills up in the tank, it also fills up in this tube at the same time to whatever water level it rests at and this will sense it if it crosses these two electrodes. Now, if you plug in a full tank, I mean, you insert a full tank here, full tank of water, and it, it senses that, and this tube fills up, and you remove the external tank, uh, this water in this tube does not go away. Unlike the old magnet-based systems, the sensing still says that there's water. You got plenty of water, so you can go ahead and brew. <laughs> and so, so, but that's a misleading indication. It just means that water is still trapped in this tube, even though the tank is removed. Moving further up here, this tube we're talking about, it goes, it goes further up, and uh, it comes to a, an opening that can dump water back into the tank if necessary, the external tank. Over here we have the air pump, which is this device. Electric motor pumps air pressure out through this line here. Goes straight through here, this line, and this line that puts the air pressure into the hot water tank. Hot water tank Pressure pushes on that water in the hot water tank, and the hot water tank dispenses water out through this line here, coming out of the hot water tank, and up through the K-cup arm and so forth, out through the needle and into the pod. That air pressure coming through here, pushing into the hot water tank, is what dispenses the last little bit of uh, remaining water coming out of the hot water tank at the end of the cycle. 
and uh, gives you that blowing out sound that you hear at the end of the dispensing to completely clear out the uh, K-cup pod. Uh, without that, you'd have water left in the pod and you pull the pod out and it just makes a mess everywhere. So this is only used on this machine toward the end of the cycle. Um, as I said, to blow out the, the remainder of the water in the pod. On uh, the older machines, this was used for the entire dispensing cycle to dispense all of the water from the tank into the, uh, into the cup. On these newer machines, however, the water pump itself is what brews during most of the cycle, pulling water from the outside tank into the hot water tank and pushes it out the K-cup arm. On the older machines, the, uh, water, the water pump was only used to fill up the hot water tank before the brew begins. On these newer machines, now the water pump is used to actually perform the brew, pulling water out of the external tank into the hot water tank and simultaneously dispensing it into your coffee cup. And the air pump is now only used to blow out that last little remaining water in your K cup. So here, this device here, uh, the tube leads to, believe it or not, just a hole here in the wall. It's a dead end, except that it's a hole and it can go to the outside world. Uh, water could, I mean, not water, air could actually leak out here and defeat the purpose of this whole mechanism since there's a hole there and, you know, there's a way for it to get out, except that that's not what this is for. This, this device here, it's not a check valve as was discussed in a lot of the older machines, putting a check valve. What this is, this is, this is just a pressure release valve, a high pressure release valve. And uh, under normal circumstances, this should never even operate. It will keep this path closed so that no air pressure can go through this tube. I think this is just for unusual situations like maybe your your needle on your dispenser on your pod dispenser the needle might be clogged if it was 100 percent clogged where would all this air pressure go well this relief valve pressure release valve i believe is the thing that uh that opens up and relieves pressure in case you get into a situation like that i'm going to go ahead and try to release this here so we can look at it. Okay, I just released the latch there. Latch holds it in place. Now I'll open it up. If you're like me, you get a better sense of it if you see a picture of what's going on. So here we go. Let's try to do this latch and the other latch on the other side. Okay, that latch. That latch, there we go. And, uh, well, Actually, this spring fits in there like that. And it goes in there into the port like that. Let's see, maybe, maybe I can zoom in here slightly. Little plug here. goes into this receptacle, hole in the receptacle. And, uh, you know, it's got a spring. And yes, I've tried putting my mouth on the tubing and blowing to see if I can blow this thing open to do the, to simulate the pressure release. And I can't. It's, it's too strong, as it should be, because it's not meant to be used very often, just in uh, a minor emergency of having too much pressure. I'm going to push this back together again like that. Okay, so now here we got uh, 
There's this tube here. That's the only thing I haven't spoken to yet. This tube here goes off to uh, the circuit board that you can't see yet. It's over here. Actually, you can see it. It's in your picture now. Yeah, it goes over here and goes to the circuit board there. This is a air sensor chip. Same kind as has been on previous machines. I don't know if it's the exact same part number, but it does the same thing. It's been there since the uh, original ones. And there you can see that chip with the with the pressure tube going to it. The, the circuitry needs to know what kind of pressure is developing. It reads that and makes decisions based on that pressure it's reading to as to what's going on, uh, whether there's anything wrong going on, or uh, whether you're at the end of the brew cycle and everything seems to be complete based on the pressure that it's reading. Down at the bottom of the machine is the water pump. It pumps water in from the external tank into the hot water tank and through into the dispensing needle. That's a view from the back of the machine right there. Power cord. There's another shot through the side. You can see it somewhat there. There is a shot there of the uh, tubing going from the water inlet from the external tank through and onto the water pump. That's the water pump there. And there's another shot of the bottom of the hot water tank where it's metal. And you can see the wire electrodes connected up to it to give it power to heat it up. The hot water tank there, you can see the, um, the water pump just below it with the blue label on it. All this talk about a hot water tank, figured I better show you a shot of that right there inside. Hot water tank. Not to be confused with the external water reservoir tank that you fill up from your faucet. This is what actually heats up the water inside the machine. If I shake it here a little bit, you might see the water level going back and forth. The top of it is plastic. The bottom is metal. This switch here tells processor that the lid has been opened up, the K-cub arm has been opened up, closed, and open. Underneath the dispenser arm and back further behind is a hole of sorts, a portal, and uh, water would normally just dump straight out of that during the dispensing operation if it were not sealed up. Now what seals it up, you can see a pad slightly to the right there. That pad swings up when you close the dispenser arm and it seals up that hole. You can see, I'll try to demonstrate a little bit, it's hard to keep the angle, but uh, see that pad there? It's going to swing up somewhat. That, that pad is swinging up, and it will swing up all the way with that mechanism there, although you can't see it. It's out of sight now. That mechanism there swings the pad all the way up when it's fully engaged and pulls itself back. And this, I believe, replaces one of the valves that used to be in the old Keurigs years ago. It's uh, needed for ventilation or press, pressure um, release or some such thing. And this is the replacement for it. It's just a mechanical mechanism. 
that uh, that opens and closes to release relief release pressure like that. So that's one thing. If you see that, water is not going to dump out of it normally because that yellow, that yellow, yeah, that white pad should cover it up just fine. And that's where it is back in the mechanism. I mentioned previously that this air pump here is what what helps clear the excess water out of the K-cup pod, um, clear it out at the end of the cycle. That's the, the blowing out sound that you hear at the end of the cycle. Coming back to this now to mention that on this machine, this air pump is actually defective. I'm going to need to replace that because, uh, like I said before, the the K-cup is not completely emptying. At the end of the brew, I don't hear the blowing out sound. And you pull the K-cup out, and it's a mess, and it'll leak everywhere as you pull it out and dump all over the counter and make a mess. And it is not clearing at the end of the cycle. Other than that, the machine is still functioning just fine in every other respect, and it still kind of does dispense coffee. It just doesn't clear out the mess that's left in the pod. So, in replacing this, replacing this uh, air pump here, we have to, uh, let's see if I can just pull it out here to start with. Makes the rest easier. It's just kind of hanging in there. Little rubber, rubber feet here give some sound insulation or isolation probably. And here you got this. Now I can... Well, I may try a screwdriver, but let me just try pulling it off with my fingers first, this tube. And I kind of pull here a little bit. Uh, to, yeah, there we go. And just pulled it right off. And a vinyl tube goes against this, this uh, yeah, that kind of barbed fitting there. It's got one barb on it. There we go. And now back out. This plugs into the circuit board up here. There's no latch on this plug. It just unplugs. You just pull it out. You can see the plug there a little bit closer. Similar to that one behind it, except the other one's bigger. So you unplug that and uh, put in a new one. Now we're going to install the new pump, starting by plugging in the electrical connector. plugs directly into the board and only goes one way as it plugs in. Back on this side, we're going to go ahead and plug the vinyl tube back into the pump. Then reinsert the pump back into the place it came from. Just like that. In closing, I'd like to thank all the people on the old single serve coffee forums.com for their help. That forum no longer exists. 
but while I did back in 2013 or so, those people there were great help in getting me started learning how to fix these machines. To MJF and everybody else that was there, thanks for your help.